<laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Jim Thorne. Welcome to Rugby 852. It's a new look, it's a new show. It's the same old voice, but it's a voice that you love. I know, you've told me. I've been getting the messages. Where do we start this season? I'll tell you where we start. We start at the very top. The man who took the silverware. Let's check out Hong Kong Football Club taking on the Borelli Walsh USRC Tigers. And who will ever forget these images from last year? Glenn Hughes slotting that golden point and what a point it was. 100 minutes of Grand Championship Rugby Union. I don't know if he's ever been there before. If there has, they wouldn't have been at the quality of this. The club went through and took four titles last year. The Challenge Trophy, the Bruni Quack. It took the lead in an emphatic fashion. And then this Grand Championship Trophy. There's none, none better. And who do they take on first up? Well, the scruffy old snagglepuss itself, the Tigers. They were bedraggled, weren't they, ladies and gentlemen? Last season, the Tigers fumbled around. They had injuries. They had no one really playing for them. They lost their skipper. They lost their strike power. They lost some loose forward ability. It was a very, very, very long season of discontent. So, last year's top versus this year's last year's bottom in the first game of the year. It didn't start out like that at all. Check out the flying fashion of the young man that's just turned up in town, Josh Henderson. No respect. No respect for that defence. Just hits the jets and flies right by. And that man, Herstich, doesn't make you feel good to see him running in the amber and black. Well, the club may have got some very, very smart operators. And as you can see, it doesn't take them too long. That man, Rafe Morrison, where can't he play? They might have him at fullback next week. Setting it up, making them drop on defence, driving the ball through. Absolutely sensational, Morrison. And the selection by Wiggins to put him there, you've got to be... You've got to, what can't Jack Wiggins see at the moment? He's seeing it that big. Hughes pops the cork on three points and we're underway in the Premiership for 2020-21. Boots aren't hard to find, and like gunslingers in the Wild West, the Tigers have uh, fanged out a bit of gold and got their own. Look at that, from two steps, 48 metres out, and still going up through the, <laughs> through the post. Josh Henderson. Uh, Josh Hart. Club, though. How good are they? Look at this. The Enterprise. Flying onto it, and then they're on the front foot. If it wasn't for Lawrence Miller, who is, I might add, probably a real catch. I'm, what club wouldn't be itching to have Lawrence Miller on side? But it all ended in rather typical fashion from that range. And Glenn Hughes gets the job done. And the club, well, they know their way to the line. There's Morrison. I told you, I told you there was a great, a great selection. And then look at that. Stop that. Right there. Hold the phone. Straight over the ball. Do you see that man? That mop of blonde hair? That's the kid himself. Rafe Morrison again. Max Denmark back from the sevens. And adding some real punch. And the club now just winding it up. Now, what's different about this shot? I'll tell you what's different about this shot. There's some attitude about this Tigers defence. There's some starkness about this Tiger defence. It's impressive. This time last year, they would have packed it up and taken it home. But they fought tooth and nail to hold on to that front line of theirs. You can't always hold on to it forever, though. Club. Just slowly building it up. Axton Barrett, yeah, he'd play a pretty prominent role later in the game. But when isn't there in 80 minutes gone down in Hong Kong rugby where he's playing that he hasn't churned them up one way or another? Set piece was also pretty tidy for the champions. They wind one up. And the first time they clear the try line, it's courtesy of the man in pink. Yes, Craig Chan. I'll tell you what, his hair's looking magnificent as well. This early in the season. Look at it go. Gorgeous.
Back to the play at hand. Don't pull a tiger by the tail. That's the moral of the story. Josh Hurstich, you kick the ball to him, he'll run it back at you like that, and that hurts, ladies and gentlemen. That hurts in any fairy tale you like. Tigers, look at this. Henderson again. A second one from out wide, a bomb from a long way away. And you can feel toes curling all over Hong Kong watching that shot. Because all of a sudden, it just you, when just when you thought it was safe to get out of your own half. You get a kid like Henderson turn up and, well, you're three points down. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the part we've all come to watch. Here we go. Dan Bully doing the work on Chapman on this side. They pop Campbell Wakeley. That's the old 2-3 special. You don't want to get caught in that one. No one wants to get caught in that one. And this is what I'm saying. Here it is. The attitude of this Tigers pack. It's different. But it's got to be more than different. It's got to be accurate. It's got to be meaningful. Otherwise, the best pickpocket team in town, that's right. Club, it's going to have you all day long. Another beautiful read of the breakdown. By well, the men in blue and white. And in steps the doctor. That's three more points. Fifty gone and up they go again, leading by ten. Tiger time. This lad could do Lee. Fresh from the sevens program and he's full of them and he's full of vigor and I'll tell you what they look like they have the club in trouble when eight of them get all lined up first stitch leading from the back again and now Nate De Terry he's an attacking force a one-man force from the back and he can slip in they got the dual playmakers club and that's what makes them special when they're on attack you're about to find out how special they can be as well. Ward, here's the Terry slipping in the first receiver again. Keeping the Tiger defence split because he's attacking from the middle of the field. Axton Barrett runs onto the ball from Lauder. And there we have it. That's how you score five points in the Saxo Club getting out to the lead. But just before, just before the curtain is pulled, look at this, Henderson. Just help yourself to yards, my friend. And opens up the space beautifully. Big Rand on hand. He can't get any further down the line. Jevin Groves there one more time. He's what the sand, man. He's everywhere. And that scrum, it's working. It's singing a happy tune. And there he is. Hurstitch flicks one out the back. For the little Sifu. Could do Lee. And he goes. You don't see him scoring too many tries in the Premiership. Well, that won't be the only one he scores this season, I can guarantee that. And then, well, what do you say about this one? This is the old... <laughs> it's lazy, it's cheeky, it's all disciplined. It did earn him a card. It did cost the team seven points. You can't smile your way out of it. I know you want to try, but you can't. The hard word coming in here from Craig Chan. Sam Purvis has got to walk. The clock's going to run up. The club's going to win. The Tigers get some respect. Big thing for us is um, playing 80 minutes. We've got good, such a good bench, like we said before. So um, grind them down, play the 80 minutes, and um, we, we know we've got enough tucking, tucking strength out wide to um, come away with points. Time now to go to the stable and bring in the horse whisperer himself, Grant Boozavell. Boozer, images of last year's Grand Championship uh, would probably wouldn't affect you at all would they <laughs> don't believe everything you read in the south china post jed uh i don't think my comments were taken out of context when i said uh it hurts to see football club lifting all three trophies it's it's truth uh from a valley perspective it's highly motivating not just for valley but everybody else so i'm back in the stable this time round, um and it's good to be back on the 852 as well well, let's check out the tail of the tape. Uh, roll action. 
Valley came out of the blocks with a hiss and a roar and you can see there were players like Rob Lennox, the tight five, trying to get quickly into the game. Um, but just a lot of errors uh, at the beginning, but right throughout, a lot of turnovers. Uh, Kowloon did well to survive on uh, little snippets of, of turnover possession there. Uh, both sides did really. Uh, typical early season game, I would have said, on that front. Well, spoilers they are. And talk about conversion, though. It's about converting possession of the points, though, Booze. You've got to get down there and score, boy. Yeah, I think early on, um, Valley was struggling to get enough position to make line breaks. And you saw Matt Rosley kicking out of the hand a lot to get position. I think he only passed four times the whole game. So field position was definitely uh, the, the game plan to get down there. Uh, some kicks through, well chased, putting the, put the back three of Kowloon under pressure. Uh, they were trying to build pressure from the very beginning uh, and just couldn't convert anything to points in those early exchanges. There were, there were no points uh, in, the, in the early 10 minutes, I think. And isn't that the way it goes? You, you, you play the game, you, you create the game, you, you push the tempo and the opposition turns around and stings you for the, for the opening points. Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, it was there was no surety that you know Valley were going to get on the ball board first with all that possession and territory. And if you've got guys like Harry Johnston and, and Jack Neville Lewis Warner leading the charge, they were popping the ball over the top a couple of times early on. Valley scrambling back, and we've been looking at those defensive clips intensely over the last few days about mistakes in defence, which allowed Kowloon to break the line, put pressure on Valley, and. But backpedaling Valley back row was unable to secure some of that legally. And yeah, it was Kowloon that came away with the first three. Uh, Harry Johnston on debut, his first three points in the Saxo Markets Premiership. Bit of a, a settler for him, I would say. So, I mean, at what point does it start getting frustrating if you're Matt Rosley itching to kick a goal um, and you're not getting it, the crack at it until the first 20, 30 minutes, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, um, you'd normally expect that once you get into their half and, and apply that amount of pressure, Kowloon are going to cough up any opposition, are going to cough up some points. Um, Rosley's kicking range, probably about 40 metres. I think we saw later in the game, it was, it was an option from 50 metres with a bit of a tail of wind and he didn't take it. Uh, Kevin Field, the other kicker for Valley, he's uh, got a season-ending uh, injury. As in, he was the most accurate kicker of the Premiership, I think, last season, along with Glenn Hughes. Um, so, yeah, it was frustrating, uh, those first 20 minutes. It was a tough day in the midfield. They wouldn't get a lot of purchase up front, but through through the tight five, Kowloon kept their fringes nice and tight. Yeah, a real tip of the hat to the, the tight five from um, DAC Kowloon. Um, Guys like Jamie Sang, who's been around for a hundred years, one of the most experienced campaigners in the Premiership, making big tackles. But Konku uh, and Bristow were tackling their hearts out. Uh, but the back row, again, Phil Whitfield, Sam Choi, uh, and the name that we hardly read was Tom Gatsby on the day. I think it was only the second half I'd called his name. He had his head in dark places. Um, and together with the front five, they were really working hard on defence. Valley just couldn't get any change out of them. They threw... Big tight forwards at them. They threw the midfield at them and they repelled them every time. Uh, finally, you came to the party in the red and black machine, uh, courtesy of the boot. Uh, set piece started to maybe get some grip around the half hour mark. Yeah, well, I think the penalty came from a scrum at that time. And, you know, when you've got Ben Higgins, Toa Colin Matangi, and in the front row, the, the Tigers, the. Um, the national team players, something's got to happen. Um, and new boy Luke Diwa, at, at, you know, on debut at Hooker as well. Finally, getting something out of Bristow and Konku and Zhang and uh, Rosley stepping up and, and doing it. Finally, getting Valley on the board. Something uh, for all that endeavour, all that hard work. Uh, Thirty minutes gone, first half. Rob Lennox has already uh, left the building. Boozer, and they were able, really, this Kowloon team, to just, you know, fire some decent shots. Yeah, well, the line-out, you know, it's one of the victims of early-season rugby. 
uh, it's it's all timing, confidence, and with a, with a new hooker for Valley, uh, Luke Diwa, you could see there was some sort of communication or just some timing issues. Uh, Lennox was off. Yeah, it wasn't going completely right. Um, you know, both sides were struggling with their lineouts, and you can see, you know, in, in this clip particularly, that off the back there, Kowloon just living off scraps, and they really seized on that one with Harry Johnson going through the through the line, and they picked up 60 meters off a lineout where you'd expect to be trundling it up towards the posts, you know, at the 40, 30 meter mark for, for Valley. So um, no, no, no alarm bells yet from line outs, but certainly in this game, it, um, it, it gifted back position quite a bit. But I reckon it was about 50-50 if you, if you looked at the stats on line outs. You know, and despite all the darling and gnashing of teeth and the woes, um, we're still only talking about a 6-3 scoreline here at the moment, but just before the half, the red and black machine uh, finds its follows its nose and finally gets up there. Um, I tell you what, it's been a great thing watching the development of this young boy Altier. He's got pace and balance. He's a real threat. Yeah, well, finally you see a line out going right there. Muller gets one off the top, and then the pass from Deploy. Uh, really brings uh, the runners onto the ball and then Rosley goes wide and yes, great to see Altia getting some ball out wide. Doesn't often happen in Hong Kong with the narrow pitches and guys like young Paul Altia needs space um, and you, that try there was very fortunate, wasn't it? The toe through, ricocheted off Jackie Neville's leg, back into Paul Altia and then Ruan Deploy scoops up for a, a fortunate try. Coming back off the turn, uh, Booze, the dreaded yellow card. There was a few, there was a few slices of cheese handed out on day one. Yeah, it was a shame, really, because they come out after the break. Uh, Valley looking to, you know, build on that four-point lead, and uh, Rosley nailed a, a penalty eight minutes into the, the second half, and then. Yeah, momentum was all lost when uh, poor Thea Ralston, a uh, bit of a clumsy challenge in the air there, um, unnecessary, yellow carded, rightly so, and that sort of gave the impetus back to Kowloon again. Uh, and then through, look, a bunch of phases once more. Um, this was the first time we really saw a team put together a series of phases in the red zone. No, neither team had been able to build that pressure and create something in there. And then we saw ne Jack Neville well, that's the biggest gap you'll ever see in Premiership Rugby. I reckon the entire Kowloon front row could have got through that gap. Rosley was trying to come across, couldn't get out. Sayers had to stay out. And Jack Neville, well, you know, as I said on the day, he only needs half a foot. That You can unlock a defence, but that was unlocked. The door was open and that brought them back to level with the conversion. So game on, 13 all, um, about 20, 20 minutes through that second half and the game was very much alive. And of course, the old seesaw, it's the old adage, isn't it? They they score and then you must at least climb into them straight after the bat. Kowloon losing focus after the score. Yeah, that's, that's you know, what happens straight after the score is always important. And we saw a scrum there that um, finally uh, Valley got the a little bit of bit of a roll on. Starting to go backwards, we saw a whole bunch of scrums down in that far corner where Valley just tried to exert pressure uh, and couldn't get it right. The scrum was twisting every time, but there, finally, and because the scrum was going slightly backwards, it, it sometimes gives the upper hand to the midfield if they can hit the line flat as the defensive midfield comes forward. And it was great seeing Pete Laverick there get onto a, a deployed pass there, straight through the middle, only a couple of fingers put on him, uh, and like a, a good, Midfield partnership there was Mitch Purvis on his shoulder, um, beats Jackie Neville with the final pass, who was probably still celebrating his try maybe under the posts, and um, that was a big one of first phase. You don't often see tries in Hong Kong straight off a scrum like that, so that was kind of unique, uh, and that would have given Fats and the, the crew something to really cheer about. This is the change in character, or the perhaps the the rising belief in Kowloon as they uh, they basically went after it. They went for it. They went for break in that final quarter and 10 out. Uh, it looked like they might have you sort of headed off at the pass. Yeah, there was. A, I think there was a play that started again with Harry Robertson with a kick over the top. He regathered. I think that was two or three times he unlocked the defence like that. It was very clever. 
Um, they worked their way downfield and applied a massive amount of pressure and, until Valley was eventually penalised um, in the corner. It looked like Jack Neville had scored. Uh, his legs were out, but Harry Sayers was sent to the bin for Valley's second yellow of the game. So they had to see out the final 10 minutes uh, with 14 players on, and then Kowloon hammered away with the line out um, and just couldn't crack it. Um, it was a good testament to Valley's defence to see out that last 10 minutes with 14 men. Desperation stuff to, 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 to not walk away with zero points from this one. Well, that was the scoreline, 13-20, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, time now to switch to words from Ryan Deploy, co-captain of Valley, uh, and a man who dishes out full credit. Yeah, mate, the lungs are blowing. Um, I think I'm speaking for all the boys there. Took a full 80 minute performance there from the lads. Yeah, really proud to get away, to come away with a win there. Five points, four points, seven points. Good first win up for us, thanks. Uh, what a character that Ruan is, trying to fit as many full credits as he could, but good on him um, and with Lennox out. So he's a proud man, um, gasping for breath there. And so at the end of that one, look, I'd say there's more questions than answers for both Valley and Kowloon, but they're, they're off the mark. It was a tussle that's going to put them in good stead for round two. Uh, uh, speaking with my Valley hat on, just glad to escape with the win. Well, all's well that ends well for the red and black machine. I win nonetheless, Booze. Who now for round two? Yep, we're off up to Kings Park again. It's going to be hosted by Borelli Walsh USRC Tigers. They're going to host us, Sokjen Valley, up there on Saturday at 4pm. I'll be calling the game with some... Poor volunteer from Tigers, no doubt. Uh, look forward to that one. Look forward to round two and um, bringing it to the viewers next week. The Horse Whisperer joins us on Rugby 852. Time now for Richard Cook to join the action and the man they call the Sandy Bay Groper makes his way in stage left. Hey, good to see you, Jed. Great, uh, great to be here. Well, it's wonderful to have you, Richard, and I, I mean all of you. Well, yeah, what can I say? What can I say? Well, you can tell us by starting on this uh, game of rugby on the weekend, it was uh, a hot old affair so, to get out there, and it sort of it started in a fairly hot manner as well. Absolutely, absolutely. It was uh, 31 degrees up there at Kings Park, and uh, I've got to say, though, I did feel like a, a frisky colt first day of the spring being let out into the paddock. It was, uh, it was fantastic up there. Well, speaking of friskiness, there was some friskiness, wasn't there, early on? I mean, uh, always good to get uh, well, your hands on the ball, but even better to get a few points straight off the bat. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, in that uh, in that first clip there that we saw, you know, terrible, terrible line-out, which was the, uh, the state of play all day. But uh, Sandy Bay got themselves into that action really, really quickly. And typically, you know, early season... Hamo had uh, Scottish coming off the line really quickly and they gave away that early penalty. Yeah, they were thundering up, weren't they? Look, he's an interesting character, this uh, boy Jack Metters. He would have to be probably one of the most underrated kickers in the premiership. I'd say so. I mean, the last two, three seasons, um, he certainly is hitting 80-90% game, you know, game on, game off. And uh, it's only really, I guess, Glenn Hughes at uh, a football club that... Uh, the holds a candle to him, to be honest. The man who probably surprised uh, most people, including himself, was uh, Rory Drummond getting away to a few fine gallops early on. Now, let's remember, he's got the uh, the look of a 30-year-old but the legs of maybe a 50-year-old. And having him charge off down the track like that is probably only going to turn him a wee bit greyer. Yeah, I mean, he, he was busy right from the get-go. And I mean, it's only sort of five minutes in when he makes that absolutely lightning blistering uh, run down the, down the touchline there he, he slipped the initial tackle and was gone but uh, he, he was busy um, early in the game and throughout so uh, yeah drove drove it hard carried the ball well and he's uh, called into Brian Rennie he's dropped a few pounds over the uh, over the summer trying to signal to uh, Craig Hammond he wants to slot in the back row and immediately gets given the number four jersey get in get in the row As good as it got, it did there for a moment uh, turn and do what can only 
be described as an ongoing litany of errors. Uh, said peacetime looked absolutely... Well, I don't know if you'd teach schoolboys to play like that, to be fair. Uh, it was, it was, would have been a few hairs being pulled out. Um, I know you don't have too many too many more hairs to pull out, Coggy. No, and uh, I think Craig Hammond uh, is much the same. I mean, <laughs> without a doubt, um, if you went to line-out stats, um, you know, and you're talking percentages, um, they would have been thrown completely in the opposite direction. You know, you'd normally be looking for 80, 80 to 90% success rate, and I think that was the failure rate. And that went both ways on the line-out. One team would win the ball, um, would get a penalty, would kick to the line, and then they'd lose the line-out. Um, so it was a real midfield arm wrestle. Um, but it was mainly, you know, Jack Metters just kept knocking those goals over that, uh, that kept the kept the scoreboard ticking for Sandy Bay. And the good point you bring up, that toing and throwing and the misfiring that was happening around said piece, you know, sure it only alluded to a 6-3 scoreline by the 25th minute, but um, look, the, yeah, the, the young man from... From Scottish, he was, well, he's electrifying and deceptively strong. Um, he could worry a few punters if he starts finding himself in some space, and there's not a lot of it in Hong Kong rugby pitches, as we know, but this guy looks like he can make a bit of space for himself. Uh, he's going to be a handful, Cookie. He's kind of, you know, for me, uh, being an Englishman, he's sort of reminiscent of, of Anthony Watson in the way he plays. You know, keeps that fan going, keep, keeps moving through the contact. And of course, he finished off uh, a great, uh, a great try for, for Scottish. Um, you know, it, it's easy when you, you catch that ball the yard out, and just got to dive over, but you've got to make sure you catch it. And 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 he did. Um, you know, fantastic from McNish in the lead up. Great hands from Connor, Connor Hartley uh, for a big man, and uh, popped the ball and Sal was there, dotted dotted it down. Beautiful. The game was truncated by massive numbers of mistakes. You know, it really did look like a round one game. Um, as we said, line outs, lots of things going astray. Um, the penalty count was very high. Um, I thought the referee, Matt Rodden, had a, had a really, really good game. He was absolutely consistent. He laid the law down. Uh, I think at half time, you know, there were 16 penalties, eight apiece. Um, and, you know, I think towards the end of the game, things started to open up a little bit as uh, as, as people realised that they were going to get pinged, things like off, off the feet or clearing out beyond the ruck. Um, he, you know, to say, he was really consistent and left people uh, in no doubt as to what they could and couldn't do. So, uh, good, good performance from Matt Rodden. So before the flop, you punch three, you come out of the shoot, Jack Metters fires you another three. It's all, I guess, going along at a reasonable pace, sort of. Yeah, I mean, that, I think that was, that was the key. And it, you know, it was fairly obvious uh, that Brett Wilkinson had told, uh, had told the team, take the points when they're on offer. Um, the, the historical matchups in the last couple of seasons between these two sides have been so, 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 so tight. Um, whether it's that grand final that you know went down to the last play that went on 15 to 20 phases, or last year up at the Rock when Sandy Bay were behind and uh, in something like the 81st minute um, went the length from inside their 22 and Liam Slade and scored. So there's never much between the two sides. And so uh, Wilkinson had obviously said, when we get a chance to take the points, let's take them. And, uh, and Meta did, he was 100%, I think, uh, six from six, and that turned out really to be the difference between the sides. You're looking for some leadership, you're looking for someone, you're looking for the talisman, you're looking at Liam Slatham, and Liam Slatham, he's looking at the try line. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this uh, the, the try that he scored was absolutely sensational. Um, it's like he's got uh, a sixth sense, like a cat. Um, the ball was moved and... Uh, Sullivan tried to pop it out and Slayton was just onto it, just picked it out of his back pocket. And, uh, you know, Liam is one of the fittest, fastest guys and he's not the man, if you're Hong Kong Scottish, that you want to see taking uh, taking the ball the other way. Um, everything was flowing forward for Scottish at that moment and suddenly it was going the wrong way for him. Uh, as you say, he's, he's a man who will come up with a play um, every and any time uh, that Sandy Bay need it. It was uh, superb. For the viewers at home, uh, we had a power outage at uh, 
Kings Park. It caused a few problems. It obviously meant the recording stopped. But uh, tell us in, at first-hand knowledge, Richard, uh, Alex McQueen uh, scores yeah. one for Sandy Bay. How, when and why? So um, the ball was uh, the ball was launched for. There's a bit of aerial ping pong. Uh, McNeish put the ball deep, and uh, Nick Cummings fielded it. Puts the ball in the air, um, and Sandy Bay claimed that ball um, coming forward onto it, probably just inside Scottish half. And the ball kind of looks like it's going to get bundled out into touch. And Slayton, yet again, he's he's hanging out half over the touchline, manages to drop the ball hooks it round um, with his right foot and the ball sort of just bouncing perilously into um, into the Scottish 22 and Alex McQueen just came onto it like a shot. The ball dropped into his hands and, uh, you know, there it was. Um, it was sort of 14 points from two tries in no time at all. And then Scottish, well, they managed to fire back and I think one of the pleasing things about this is this boy Coburg, and I've seen his development over the years, He's gone uh, extraordinarily well. He's, you know, um, what a talent he is. And it just adds more depth to the nine position in Hong Kong. Absolutely. And don't forget James Christie's to come back in a couple of weeks as well to put some pressure on that nine nine jersey at, uh, at Scottish. But it was, um, you know, it was a superb piece of play. Nardoni took a quick, uh, took a quick tap, took 10, 15 yards out of, uh, out of Sandy Bay while they were napping. Um, the ball eventually finds its way into the hands of McNeish and some real, um, you know, jiggery pokery, double pump the ball, bit of an eye fake one way. And Dean Squire, the new centre, who's come over from London Scottish, ran an absolutely superb line, made the break, um, and was awake to the fact that Coburg was screaming up on his uh, on his left shoulder, popped the ball to him nicely, and uh, the finish, as you say, by Coburg was. Uh, was special. The wins are one, and the wins exactly what they got. Let's listen to skipper, or co-skipper, I should say, Liam Slatham. First week, we'll take it, take the win. Um, we always knew it was going to be scrappy, but uh, yeah, we'll go back to the drawing board, and we've got football club next week, and that's the that's the next task. So we'll be on it. Enthusiasm was definitely there. Every, everyone was out there. We we're all really looking forward to just getting back and playing rugby again. But obviously, kicking off two o'clock in the middle of the day just. The energy dissipated by the end of that game. I think the boys were lungs were starting to get quite heavy. Week one complete for the Saxo Markets men's premiership of Hong Kong. The eyes of Asia watch and top dog status still remains with club played one. Four points. Up next, Sandy Bay. And will that be where they stay? Let's hope for the sake of Breaking radios, it doesn't happen. Let's say, stay up there, boys, stay up there. Uh, Valley in third, balloon in their 10th year and celebrating it hard. The Hong Kong Scottish, I'm sure the party has only just begun and rounding it off the USRC Tigers. It seems a shame that the Tigers should be sitting in sixth. Five things we learned about the Premiership, ladies and gentlemen, and these are five hard facts. You know, you can train all day, every day but there's nothing like actually playing the game. Uh, Number two, if you're a Tiger supporter, you are not imagining it. Yes, you missed Josh Herstich that much last season. Number three, Rafe Morrison at inside centre. Now, has Jack Wiggins lost his mind? I mean, is this guy crazy? Is he even saying the answer is yes? Yes, he is. Very sane indeed. Uh, Number four, discipline, grasshopper, discipline, combining, now, here's a stat that I didn't think you'd be interested in, but I am, the losing teams compared to the winning teams on the weekend suffered a lot of difference in terms of where the penalties were coming from. Now, in three categories combined, the losing teams conceded 12 penalties each, while the winning teams conceded 7.3 penalties on average. It's going to be an interesting stat to keep following. Thanks to Sparky Carter for that. Uh, and number five, look, it's been said, but it needs to be said. It sort of goes without saying. 
but it needs to be said. How good does it feel to be playing rugby? Those are the five things we learned about the Premiership this week. Round two of the Saxo Markets Men's Premiership for Hong Kong kicks off on Saturday at two o'clock. And Ricardo, let me take you for a walk through the wonderful streets of round number two. Bloomberg Hong Kong Scottish taking on Kowloon at Kings Park. Our thoughts and comments. Well, two two sides looking to get uh, get their account underway. Um, I thought Kowloon were pretty impressive against Valley on, uh, on Saturday. They pushed them all the way, working really, really hard right up to the whistle to uh, to try and get the draw at 20 all. But uh, alas, it was not to be. Scottish, massive amount of work to do this week, especially in the line out and the scrummage. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd say it's going to be a, a tough forward old game. Um, but I could possibly see Kowloon, Kowloon just edging that one. If, uh, if the performance is the same as last weekend. But it's going to be... Viewers, a viewers can see that on Game of the Week. Sam Fiosi, uh, your commentator for game number one. Then at 3.30 from the beautiful confines of the Hong Kong Football Club and brought to you by the silky voice of Richard Cook. The Texas Club taking on Herbert Smith, Freehills, HKU, Sandy Bay. And really, we just want to call them the Saints. <laughs> yeah, I mean this this is the matchup of the two unbeaten sides from uh, from round one. Um, I thought football club were pretty clinical and workmanlike. Um, not too much of the razzle dazzle that they showed last season, but they worked hard. And let's be honest, Tigers really, really pushed them. And uh, I don't think the score really reflected what was going on in the field. So I think Wilkinson will need to really, really sharpen up on that line out um, if uh, if Sandy Bay had a really make any kind of push and make uh, make football club work so I'd say maybe just in the favour of football club on that one and especially being back down at Sports Road where uh, they obviously love playing in front of their home fans uh, Game number three kicking off at 4pm back to Kings Park on the number one pitch it's the Bradley Walsh USRC Tigers taking on Society General Valley Grant Boosevelt the commentator uh, look it could be one way traffic but Look, Josh Hurstich, Kadu Lee, uh, Josh Henderson, the new boy playing at 10, he looks like he could drive these guys around the park. Uh, Valley got off to a grubby one, but they got the win nonetheless. Cookie, please, take over. Yeah, I, 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 thought, that, uh, I thought that Tigers were worth a lot more than, uh, than a 20-point loss to football club. Um, I think it will give them a great deal of heart considering the, uh, the season they had last year. I think the comment you made about Hurstage being back in there, man, he got through some work. He absolutely ploughed it, both sides of the ball, and uh, and he was up for it. Uh, and I think that's the best shape I've seen him in. As you say, Henderson there at 10, uh, he ran the cutter really, really well. Um, but everybody stepped up uh, at Tigers. So, um, you know, the form book would say Valley should should shade it. But I tell you, if Valley are not, uh, not at their best, Tigers, uh, Tigers could easily take this one, especially at Kings Park. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just check out those round two matches one more time in the Saxo Markets Men's Premiership for Hong Kong. Game one, 2 p.m. Kings Park one, celebrating their tenth year in the Premiership. It's Bloomberg Hong Kong Scottish. The Exiles taking on DAC Kowloon. Intriguing, very intriguing. Game two, 3:30 p.m. live and direct from the Hong Kong Football Club on Sports Road. The Texas Club taking on Herbert Smith, Freehills, HKU, Sandy Bay, a.k.a. The Saints. In the last one of the day, the Borelli Walsh, USRC Tigers taking on the Red and Black Machine on KP1. Kick off there, 4 p.m. That's it from Rugby 852 this week. On behalf of my guests, Grant Boozeval and Richard Cook, thanks also to Norman Way and the man on the snipping machine, Jeff Stone. This is Jed Thine signing off. See you next week.